Good morning, students. I wish it was this easy to go back to Alaska, but a green screen can't quite do that. <laughs> um, today we're going to read a reading passage talking about a young lady's trip to Alaska. Well, of course, I have a lot to say about that because I used to live in Alaska. So we're going to read her story and then you're going to hear my side of the story, what I was able to experience in Alaska. So this should be a lot of fun as we learn about the weather and climate of the final frontier, the great state of Alaska. Here we go. The reading passage is called My Trip to Alaska. It is found in Accelerated Learning, Reading Science, Weather and Climate B, about Earth and space. And so I definitely want to give credit to STEM Scopes for making this reading passage possible. Now, of course, there's going to be additional pictures and commentary by me, Mrs. Bright, because I love Alaska. And it was my home for a few years. My trip to Alaska. My name is Maisie. And during the last week of January, my dad had a business trip in Anchorage, Alaska. My mom and I went with him. I have lived on Galveston Island, Texas since I was born, and now I am 10 years old. My mom says we are beach people. That means we love the sunlight, sand, and water. Before we left, my mom was worried that we would not know how to handle the cold. We do not even own boots, hats, or gloves because we do not need them in Galveston. We knew that Alaska was going to be colder, so mom and I got on the internet to check the weather forecast. What did it say? Snow was predicted. I had never seen snow before, so I jumped up and down. My mom just looked worried and made plans to buy us the warm clothes we would need. Maisie is taking a trip to visit Alaska. I lived there for three years. I remember thinking the same thing as Maisie. My family had lived in Corpus Christi, Texas for a very long time. We were beach people too. I went to Anchorage, Alaska for the first time in March, just after Maisie visited in January. My husband had already moved there because of his new job. His new job had already started. So I went there to find our new house to visit and to find a job as a teacher in Alaska. There wasn't a lot of snow on the ground in March of that year, but lots of snow in the mountains, of course. We drove to Portage Glacier and I saw my first Alaskan bear. <laughs> it wasn't real though. This is Mrs. Bright, me, standing in front of Portage Glacier. And I'm standing on Portage Lake, but thankfully it was frozen at the time, so I didn't fall through. The weather that day, the temperature was about 25 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 3.9 degrees Celsius. When we got on the airplane, the pilot introduced himself and then gave the weather update for Anchorage. He said the current temperature is 27 degrees Fahrenheit. Snow is falling, although it is not expected to be heavy. The forecast for the nighttime low is 7 degrees Fahrenheit. This is all pretty typical for this time of year. I looked over at mom and she was already shivering. When we left Galveston that morning to head to the airport, the thermometer outside the house said it was a balmy 68 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the kind of weather mom loves. For my part, I just could not wait to see snow and wear my new boots and gloves. I sat in the window seat and as we flew across the US, I saw snow-capped mountains for the first time in my life. When the pilot announced that we were landing, I peered eagerly out of my window, trying to get a glimpse of the snow on the ground. I could see it piled in heaps on the sides of the landing strip. It was beautiful. I had a great time staying outside as much as my mom would let me. It was so cold that the hair inside my nose froze. Even I had to admit it was nice to come in for some hot chocolate every once in a while. I could not stay outside all day because there are only about eight hours of daylight in Anchorage in January. That is because the city is so far north. Dad said we might be able to come back in June. Then sunset happens about two o'clock in the morning and sunrise is about two hours later. Can you imagine having the sunshine for 22 hours a day? Maisie definitely visited Alaska in the wrong month. <laughs> it is very cold in January and the sun is not out for very long. The following pictures that I'm about to show you were taken on December 21st, the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. I taught fifth grade at Sherrod Elementary School and this is looking out the windows of my classroom. Do you think you could handle how dark it is in Alaska during the winter months? 8 a.m 
pretty dark outside. 9 a.m. 10 a.m. 11 o'clock. Noon. 1 o'clock. 2 o'clock. 3 o'clock. 4 o'clock and 4.36, the time I left school. And as you can see, it was dark when I got there and it was dark when I left. And yes, the students still went to recess when it was cold outside, but their teacher from Texas stayed inside. They would bring their winter clothes for recess and they could even bring their winter toys like sleds and cross country skis. These are some of my students in Alaska. They were very happy because they scored high grades on their math test, so I got them root beer floats. This made me think about what the weather would be like with 22 hours of daylight. I figured it should be warmer than it was in January. I went online in the hotel lobby and found that the average summer temperatures in Anchorage are around 62 degrees Fahrenheit with a low of 48 degrees, fairly close to what we had when we left Galveston. I told this to my teacher and she helped me do research project to learn more about the weather in Anchorage. It turns out that temperatures in the low 20s are pretty normal for January there. One year, they had a record low of negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Can you believe that? The summers in Alaska are unbelievable. I highly recommend visiting during the summer months. I loved Alaska so much I got a job during the summer when school was out at the Palmer Museum and Visitor Center. I love sharing with visitors what it was like to live in Alaska, what wildlife they might see, what hiking trails were the best, the history of the state of Alaska, and what makes Palmer, Alaska awesome. The 4th of July had to be celebrated a little differently since it was never dark enough to have fireworks. In Glacier View, Alaska, instead of fireworks, they launched cars off a mountain. It was a little strange, but it was very fun. The cars were stripped clean before they were launched so there was no harm done to the environment after the wreckage was picked up. How would you celebrate the 4th of July if you couldn't celebrate with fireworks? told me that scientists called climatologists keep records of all kinds of weather data. In fact, the data collected over many years tell what the climate is for a particular area. Climate is pretty much what you expect the weather to be during a specific time of the year. You expect Anchorage to be cold with snow during the winter. You expect Galveston to be hot, sunny, and humid during the summer. You do not really expect to build a snowman on a Galveston beach in winter, but I wish I could. On the other hand, weather is what happens hour to hour and it can change quickly. For example, when we arrived in Anchorage, it was snowing, but later that afternoon, the sun came out. Weather can change from hour to hour, from day to day, and from season to season. I am learning all that I can about the climate and weather in Anchorage because if we go back this summer, I need to know what to pack. As I said before, I highly recommend visiting the great state of Alaska, the final frontier. The climate in Alaska is definitely cold and dark in winter and warmer and more sun in the summer. Yes, I love Alaska. So, let's see if you were listening during that reading passage. How do you think mom feels about the weather in Anchorage? A, she's excited to see snow. B, she was worried about the cold. C, she is happy that there will be a that there will be 22 hours of daylight, or D, she is afraid of the dark. Hmm, how did Maisie's mom feel? If you said B, she is worried about the cold, you are correct. Number two, what would a climatologist do? A, travel from place to place recording temperatures and precipitation. B, collect data on weather conditions over time. C, discuss weather data with other scientists, or D, all of the above. What would a climatologist do? If you said all of the above, you are correct. Good job. Number three, 
which is an example of a statement about climate. A. It rained three inches last night. B. Snow and very low temperatures are predict predicted for tomorrow. C. Florida is known for its sunny skies and warm temperatures. Or D. I plan to go swimming tomorrow. Hmm. If you said Florida is known for its sunny skies and warm temperatures, you are correct. Great job. Number four. Which of the following is true about the climate of Anchorage, Alaska? A. The winters are cold and snowy. B. The snow was piled next to the landing strip. C. It was 27 degrees Fahrenheit. Or D. Summers are cold in Anchorage. If you said the winters are cold and snowy, then you are correct. And then number five. The passage is organized by A. Presenting the effects caused by weather B. Telling about a sequence of events that led the main character to think about weather and climate C. Comparing and contrasting Maisie and her dad or D. Describing the climate of Galveston Hmm. If you said B. Telling about a sequence of events that led the main character to think about weather and climate like what happened to Maisie then you are correct. So whether you are in Galveston, Texas, or Anchorage, Alaska, <laughs> whether you're hot or whether you're cold, everywhere you go has weather and climate. Thank you for learning about Alaska's weather and climate with me.